all of these byproducts would be in a landfill. And, and that is a story we're not telling, that the cows are the ultimate recyclers. Hello, everyone. I'm Michelle Michael. I'm Brandon Whitworth. Together, we created the World Without Cows documentary, where we explored the complexities behind what might seem like a simple question. Would we be better off in a world without cows? We had conversations with farmers, with ranchers, with scientists, and lots of others on the front lines of food production and environmental stewardship. And what we do here really is dive deep into what's a nuanced impact really of cows on culture, the economy, the environment, even nutrition. This podcast is an extension of those conversations as we continue to explore this evolving conversation about the role of cows in shaping our world. We're here now with Brian Sundberg, co-founder of Progressive Dairy Solutions. Brian, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Give me a breakdown of what exactly Progressive Dairy Solutions does. So Progressive Dairy Solutions is a nutrition and management consulting firm based in Oakdale, California. Uh, But we do business uh, California to New York, everywhere in between, and international as well. We we do some work in Dubai and Saudi and and, uh, uh, South America, Argentina and, and Chile. So what we're responsible for is we... We feed the cows, right? We, we formulate the diets that the dairy cattle eat. And with that, our clients, we, we feed about 1.2 million cows in, in the country. And our clients spend about $4.4 billion a year feeding their cows. So we're in control of that $4.4 billion. And what we feed the cows, what kind of return on investment we get with that money, with production, profit, health of the cows, and uh, management consulting as well. So we do have some some uh, employees with Progressive Dairy Solutions that does employee training, uh, any type of feeder schools, milker schools, that kind of thing. So uh, nutrition and management consulting is, is what we do. You had an opportunity the other day to see the documentary we created, World Without Cows. What do you think was missing in that conversation? So um, from what I do every day, again, I feed cows, and, and cows are consumers of byproducts. And I call them the ultimate recyclers. So they, they are consuming human food production waste to the tune of, in the U.S., approximately 5,000 truckloads of byproduct feed per day. 5,000. 5,000 truckloads per day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So cows will consume up to approximately 50% of their intake in the form of byproducts. Now these are byproducts. Uh, there's there's a, a an extensive list of byproducts we can feed, but soybean meal, canola meal. So these are are byproducts of oil seed production. So they're they they crush the oil seeds, they get the oil. What's left is a high protein meal. There's also uh, fruit and vegetable waste. Uh, almond holes in California. So it's, so it's, it's the, the hole, the shell, and then the nut. And so these holes are fed. So all of these byproducts would be in a landfill, again, approximately 5,000 truckloads a day. And, and that is a story we're not telling, that the cows are the ultimate recyclers. So they're taking this feed stuff that, that, is, that we are not using as humans and won't use, and we are converting it back to high-quality protein for human consumption. So I think it's amazing. It's what I do every day. I have a passion for feeding cows and, and, and for consulting on it. And it's a story that, that is not told enough and needs to be told. I fly you know, all over the country working with dairies. And a lot of times I get on an airplane, people ask what I do, and I talk to them about what I do. And they say, wow, I've never met a dairy nutritionist before. So uh, tell me more. So in that conversation, we, we usually get to the point of the cows being the ultimate recyclers and, and byproduct consumers. And when I tell them that story, the people outside of agriculture are, are blown away by, by the, that fact. So it's, it's a really neat thing that, that cattle in general do, but specifically dairy cows in the U.S. Uh, and it's, it's, a, um, it's, again, it's amazing to turn feed, feed byproduct waste into high quality protein. 
in the documentary, we talk about upcycling, recycling. Mm -hmm. What are some things maybe people might not think of when they think of things that cows can use that would be waste otherwise? For example, grocery waste. So, excellent question. One thing that uh, that's pretty amazing is cotton seed. So, so the, the, we, we grow cotton for the, the clothes we're all wearing today. Uh, what is left is a high protein, fiber, and fat product that years ago used to be burned. They didn't know what to do with it many years ago, so they, they would burn it. Um, now, today, we feed it to dairy cows. It is highly nutritious. When it comes to feeding the world, um, something that we didn't exactly touch on in the documentary is a lot of this food waste. When we talk about this, what would otherwise be waste, that cows turn into something valuable for us, why is that part of the conversation when it comes to the to feeding the world, why, why is that so important to include in that conversation, I should say? Well, it's it's so important just because of the, go, again, going back to the recycling of it. It's th this, is, this is food waste that would be in landfills. How many more landfills would we need to take in these, just in the U.S., these 5,000 truckloads a day? Now, you look at uh, around the world, what would that mean? So uh, we're, we're talking significant increase in the amount of landfills that would be needed to deal with that. Now, there's other byproducts as well. Uh, di distillers grains coming from ethanol production. So they take corn, produce ethanol. What's left is a high protein, high energy feed. Uh, th that is, th that's consumed in, in swine and, and in dairy. Uh, w w look at uh, the, the Kentucky ale, the, the, the brewing uh, division of, of all tech and these large breweries, they produce a lot of wet brewers grain that is all fed to dairy cows. You, you've mentioned landfills a number of times, but aren't you the general consumer out there that doesn't understand this? I look at that and I go, okay, well, you're literally describing organic material that surely will break down over time. What's so bad about these, this 5,000 truckloads per day being in a landfill? Well, number one, needing the landfill for that, and yes, yes, it will break down. But you're taking nutrients, and you're 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 breaking it down in, into the soil that is going to have no use, versus putting it into a dairy cow that will again produce high quality protein for human consumption. Right. I mean, yeah. We're having this conversation, and and we learned so much in in making this documentary, and I think how do you relay this sort of information to people who don't know about the role of cows in our world. How do we share this information with the general public? Well, you know, in my world, again, I'm, I'm in the ag world. Uh, I, I'm into farming. I'm into the, the consulting on dairies like we've discussed. Uh, I'm also a partner in a milk processing plant, and I'm a partner in a feed byproduct company. So my, my world, everybody knows about about what we're we're talking about, and we're talking, and, and the importance of cows in this world. So it's it, it, we need to figure out how to get it out to the people that don't understand this, and and get it out from our circle of people that that we usually associate with. Do you think people would be surprised to find out all the things that that cows use that we as humans have no use for? A absolutely, and 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 that's a good point. Bringing up just. Uh, we're we're talking about high quality protein is is uh, you know converting these byproducts to high quality protein, but there are so many other uses for a cow. Like what? A, a, and um, the the leather on our shoes uh, to, today. It's uh, th there's there's so many different uses for cows that I know a lot of people outside of agriculture do not realize. What gives you hope for the future? What gives me hope is is that people are have, have kind of gone away from the the more natural whole foods to more synthetic, highly processed foods, and and what gives me hope is is people are starting to convert or revert back to uh, meat, milk, and eggs are good for us. Uh, you know, when the food pyramid came out in in the '80s, the, there was a shift from, you know, eating less animal uh, proteins and and animal fats, and we replaced that with sugar and carbohydrates. And there's an obesity epidemic that that started after that, in my opinion. 
So getting back to the the whole foods, which we're a part of in, in animal agriculture, uh, is is a healthy diet. You must travel a lot with your business. You talk about it being you know quite global, um, spread out all around the world. Uh, I'm sure you share this story w- when you're traveling, so to speak, with just people on airplanes and airports, just around the world. Everyday people, do they push back when you share this information? What's their reaction? No, they don't. They they are um, they are surprised. Uh, they are impressed, and it, it is uh, it's a story again that that we as an industry are not good at telling. So me talking to somebody on an airplane one on one that's great, but but we we need to get to the masses more with our story because every single person I tell the story of how dairy, dairy cows are fed and and the being the ultimate recyclers. Uh, every single person is amazed by that. And it is. They're, they're, it's an amazing animal. And a world without cows would, would, uh, would be a big detriment to our society. Of course, our documentary doesn't push any sort of agenda. The idea really is to do exactly what you're talking about, which is broaden this conversation. Do you think the documentary is a start to that conversation? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, th- I think it's an excellent start. It gets people talking. And then in situations like this, we're getting more specific as to, uh, you know, we're, we're elaborating and, and uh, um, broadening what the, what the documentary was about and getting into more specifics, again, like the byproduct consumption. In the documentary, there is a, an image of a cow, words of all the things that come from a cow are made up. But when it comes to this upcycling, you could almost create some other image because it's endless, correct? It, it is endless. And for example, uh, corn gluten feed, which is a byproduct of making high fructose corn syrup for soda, is is a byproduct that is that is fed to dairy cows. Uh, high, high in protein, it's a mid-level uh, starch ingredient. Uh, an, another item is bakery byproduct, which is old donuts and bread and everything else like that that is that is ground up and and fed to, fed to dairy cows. Uh, d- d- again, distiller's grains, which is byproduct of ethanol production. Wet brewer's grains, which is a byproduct of the brewing industry. Uh, the, the oil seeds, the soybean meal, canola, safflower, sunflower, all of those are oil seeds that are crushed for the oil and then and then what's left is a is a protein meal. So um, th- these are all, all fed to dairy cows. Almond holes in California is a very important feed in the California dairy cow diet. It, it consists of fiber and sugar. Again, the, these holes are not useful for humans to consume at all. Um, there's uh, fruit and vegetable waste, tomatoes, pears, apples, asparagus. We, I've, I have fed almost anything you can think of, citrus meal or uh, citrus pulp. Uh, there's beet pulp as well, which is a byproduct of sugar beets. So they, they, they harvest the sugar beets, they extract the sugar out of it. What's left is a nice, highly digestible fiber byproduct. So the, the, the list of feed byproducts that are consumed by dairy cows that would, in, in, if they weren't consumed by dairy cows, would be put into a landfill is endless. I think some people might hear that and go, oh, so we're feeding them a bunch of garbage as opposed to letting them graze and get all their nutrients from the grass. Or is it the point that there's still valuable nutrients in all of these products that we can't utilize, but the cow can? Exactly. So these are all high quality, highly nutritious for dairy cows, but they are, they are f- feeds or food that humans will not consume. And when you go to the grocery store, the fruits and vegetables that are that are in the produce section, they want those to look pretty, and if they are in any way deformed or they don't look good, those nobody's going to going to grab those. Those are going to be left on the shelf. So instead of putting those on the shelf, those are culled out. So the, the dairy cows will consume all of those coal fruits and vegetables just because humans want them to look pretty. Thank you so much for listening. You can find the World Without Cows podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Or check us out at worldwithoutcows.com to learn more.